This is Judge Joe Brown, and we're listening to We All Be News. News Free Dixie for the 21st Century. What we were talking about was the universal law. Before there was Harvard, Yale, MIT, um, any school in Britain, there was a universal law. That was before the Catholic Church, the Baptist Church, the Christian Church, the Muslim Church, and here's how it works. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> if you take money, there's a whole lots of secret details, but it's universal law. Mm -hmm. Now the word God means power. That's why you can call the mafia Godfather. When I was a little boy, uh, the Baptist church and my mom would say, you never lose God's name in vain. Uh, God's name is I am, I am. Everything's a vibration. Wasn't no reading and writing here. Mm. Um, so in the Baptist church, when we say the Lord's Prayer and end up saying, Amen, we really saying I am. Mm. And so if you look at universal law, universal law, in my mother's stomach, It was talking about the, the mother tongue, not the man tongue. The mother tongue, that's where my mother communicated with me. Communicated, the first nine months in her stomach, all I'm drinking is her urine, and when she's not drinking enough water, mm -hmm. then I kick her. They call it the uh, morning sickness. No, it's not, it's drink some more water. Now, 24 hours before you born, all those cables connecting me to my mama and to the universal God, they cut loose. Because for the first nine months, the first nine months, <clears throat> all I had to eat was my mother's urine. Mm -hmm. So if my mother drank Pepsi Cola, Coca Cola, beer, and sweetness, and all of that, then that goes into my dinner, which messes me up. That's it. Now, 24 hours before that happens, all those cables disconnect and I start floating down the fallopian tube. Your birthday is 24 hours before I come out because I disconnected with her. Christmas symbolized the birthday of Jesus Christ. It's called Christmas Eve party. New Year's symbolized the year of the New Year. It's called New Year's Eve party. Now many of your cities in America on New Year's Eve, Christmas Eve, if we out having a party and drinking and call a cab, that cab got to take us home up to 60 miles for free or they can go to jail. You don't have to do that on New Year's Day or Christmas Day. Now let me explain to you a little better of universal law. When you hear a storm coming, the tree can't talk, the thunder can't talk, the lightning can't talk, but you can tell how loud it is, how vicious the storm going to be. Well, the universe works the same way. You don't have to turn on NBC, CBS. The NBC wasn't even here when they was having storms and stuff. But then you get this ignorant man that want to control and he's so scared of the real, real universal God that he starts creating the seven wonders of the world. Ain't that interesting? The mm -hmm. seven wonders of the world is nothing that the universal God made. Huh? The moon, the sun, the stars, the oceans, that's not one of the wonders. So now once we start understanding that and get back 
black folks was told, uh, don't, don't talk like that. You got a college degree, you won't get the job. Stop talking color. So we stopped. If we go to a Chinese restaurant today, they'll take your order in English, but while they're waiting on to be prepared, they're talking Chinese. We go to an Italian shop. They talk to you in English, but while they're working on your motor, they're talking in, in, in Italian, the mother tongue. Mm -hmm. So if you look at what you look at as a dollar bill, look at the number 11 at the top. Okay, there's 12 families that own your money, not the United States government. 12. So any money that has the 11 on it is owned by the 11th family. And then that's not yours. Mm -hmm. It goes back to them and they print up new money. Now, let me show you how the universe works. This money was printed what? You see the date? Yes, sir. 2009. 2009. Now, if this would have been printed 1963, you got that? Yes, sir. Now, let me mark this real quick. Oh, it's already marked. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. 1963, this would be worth hundreds of millions of dollars. And there's a handful of people know that. Mm -hmm. Okay, 1963. Now, watch this here. Can you slant down on this? Yes, sir. Okay, now, if you look at this is the 11th family mm -hmm. that owns this note. Okay? Now... Why this is worth so much money, it's uh, if you count the olive leaves yes, sir. around here, it's 10, 12, and that's what? 22. 22. Okay, 22. Now, if you put 11, 11, just one 11, mm -hmm. okay, what month is 11? Uh, November. So November the 22nd, 1963, Kennedy killed in Dallas, Texas. Now follow me. Kennedy. Kennedy. And right under that is Dallas, Texas. Can you see it? Kennedy. Wow. See it. Okay. That's universal law. Wow. No white man, no black man, no woman can get around universal law. They think they can, but they can't. You got any questions you want to ask about that? I mean... Uh, it happens every day. The more you into it, the more you see it. Mm -hmm. Huh? Yes, sir. Uh, let me show you how this works. Mm -hmm. I can't draw. Oh, no, no, no. Let me draw. Okay. I'll be 84 this year. Wow. I went to a black high school. Hmm? Mm-hmm. Black grade school. Yes, sir. And... He's, I'm one of the blackest people on the planet. Yes, sir. Okay, now watch this here. You draw a stick figure when you was a little child? Mm hmm I can't draw a black one. <laughs> no, look at that. Yes, sir. That's sad. Mm hmm I can't draw a black one. It happened to me way back there. Mm hmm In school. Mm hmm I went to a black school. No white person taught me this. Hmm? I cannot draw a black stick figure, man. Look mm. at this here. Huh? That's white. Mm. Now, that's what we're dealing with, and we think we're not. Now, watch this here. So, here is, again, mm -hmm. the if this was 1963 printed instead of here, okay? And then you count the 22 leaves. Now you only do this on the bill that has 11 mm -hmm. and the K. Okay, so when you look at this here, if it was changed to 1963, millions, hundreds of millions. Why? They want to get these off the market. Wow. So you can show them to people, mm -hmm. tell them, but you can't. Now America can see this. Mm -hmm. For the first time. Mm -hmm. So 11 on one side, 11 on the other. So if you get 
12 on one side, 10 on the other. Mm -hmm. So if you get 11, see the 11? Yes, sir. 11, olive leaves, 22. If it said 1963, then here, Kennedy killed in Dallas, Texas. Wow. Hmm? Wow. Incredible. That's how the universal law works. Wow. And so when the white boy and all these other folk think they got power, they have no power. And as I said before, I'll be shocked if they have an election this year. Mm -hmm. We'll be in the martial law. Mm -hmm. huh? Yes, sir. Obama will stay president. Huh? Mm -hmm. huh? Let me say something interesting to you. If you was eight years old now, hmm? mm -hmm. for the eight years of your life, You've seen a black man president of the mightiest nation in the world. Hmm? Yes, sir. First four years, black man. Election, black man. So let's say if Hillary won this year, your brain would say, oh, I didn't know a white person could be president of the United States. Mm -hmm. I mean, think about how important that is, man. Because yes, all over the world, that went into a brain, huh? Mm -hmm. That Harvard, MIT, or uh, Howard University didn't make. And so children ain't born racist, prejudiced. They learn that. And so what we're looking at now is children all over the world, eight years and down, have never seen nothing but a black. That cannot be erased off mm -hmm. at all. Mama can't tell you. Daddy can't tell you. It couldn't have happened without television to the mind. So the first four years, white folks didn't even know they was racist. Huh? Hmm. So you're going to be a one-term president. Huh? Hmm. And I said, well, y'all going to let him run you crazy. Mm -hmm. Second term, they're going mad. Now, if I'm insane, you can take me to a mental hospital and they got stuff can cool me down. Mad? What do you do with a mad? Don't know what you do but kill him. Mm -hmm. That's what's fixing to happen. That's what's fixing to happen. Mad, mad, mad. And they're not even aware of it. Now, let me close by saying this. If you and your mother or your brother or your sister or father or your wife or girlfriend sitting in a restaurant hmm, and the waiter come by with some flour mm -hmm. that she's taking back to the kitchen for the cook and she trip and fall and that flour gets on your suit. Now just tell me, what do you think your reaction would be? Be angry. Hmm? Be angry. Now, I want you to hear this mm -hmm. real good. You would be angry. Mm -hmm. Now, did the flower get inside your body or outside? Outside. I'm going to say this again. Did the flower get inside your body or outside your body? You, you like, I'm not here. Uh, uh, yeah, outside, yeah. Outside. Okay. Now, uh -huh. in order for you to get angry, that goes inside. It creates a chemical. Mm. The person that dropped it on you didn't get nothing inside their body. You did. Mm. That's why hatred and bitterness. huh? Mm -hmm. That's why if a white person is racist and you get angry, you put a chemical inside their body which they couldn't do. Which they could not do. Mm. You can wipe that off your suit Send it to the cleaners, but you can't wipe it off your brain. They've got to make the chemical to create anger. Now, when you start watching universal law, that's altogether different.
Talking about the lesser of the evils. That's a violation of God. That's right. Here's the lesser of the evils. Your grandmother's sick. And you have to go because you got a foot operation. And you only got two people you can pick from to watch her till you get back. One has been arrested for raping old women. He's been arrested twice. The other one's been arrested 40 times. Which one do you pick? The one that's been arrested twice or 40? That's the lesser of the evils. Mm. That's the less, and that's what this election is going to end up for a lot of people. The lesser of the evils. That's why Hitler and the Nazis came in. When Hitler won the first time, it was less than 5,000 people. Mm -hmm. That's what you get for the lesser of the evils. If you vote for the lesser of the two evils, you should end up with the evil of the evil. And that's what's going to happen. And Bob, you also had, you proved that there was a black president. I know you showed me the $2 bill. But the black guy there. The first... The first eight presidents of the United States was black men. Mm -hmm. One was dark. Now let's look at this here. There's John Hanson. Black face, gray nappy hair. Okay? Mm. Now let's show you how it works. Two dollar bill. All money belongs to the 12 Federal Reserve Banks. So if you have this, it's not the United States, it belongs to this family, 11th family. Mm -hmm. Okay? Now, let's watch. This is, did we do this before? No, 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 sir. We didn't. We did a dollar bill about Dallas. Oh, no, 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 I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Uh -huh. Yeah. So now, this here is, glad you said that. Mm -hmm. Now, this here belongs to the 11th Federal Reserve, which is the 11th family. Yes, sir. Okay? Now, universal law, they can't hide it. Here he is there, black. Now, in the South, a lot of black folks that look at that, they can pick out the mulattoes. Because mm -hmm. they had a lot of mulattoes in the South. They grew up with them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They grew up with them. Wow. Now watch this here. I can't, I can't draw. But let me just say, the crescent moon. Mm -hmm. Can you draw that crescent moon? Yes, sir. Here. Okay. Okay, and then there's a star. Okay, I'm sorry. Star. No, that's all right. That's good. That's a star under here. Under here. Under here. Okay. Here, here. Down, down. Down. Down, right, right down there. Right here? Now, yeah, that's why Ramadan comes different. Wow. Is when the moon mm -hmm. turns and the star is really down under that. That's the crescent moon. Mm -hmm. Okay? Now, the French come up with a thing called a croissant. That's yes, right. It's the same as this. Mm. Except they put ham on it. Mm. Which Muslims can't eat pork. That's how vicious they are. Hmm? That's the word crescent and croissant is the same. Mm. Hmm? That's how vicious this thing is, man. That's and so what you're looking at now is the largest religious group on the planet right now. Mm -hmm. It's Muslims. Mm. Hmm? The average age is 17. So these white supreme, mm -hmm. supreme mean I'm supreme to you. Mm. They figured it out. If there's X amount of billions of Muslims on the planet, and the average age is 17, 
then how many children will they have in the next 10 years? Mm. How many children will they have in the next 20 years, the next 30 years, the next 40 years, the next 50 years? How many children will they have in 100 years? How many children will they have in 1,000 years? They will swallow everything up. What you seeing now in America and around the world is white supremacists is fixing to wipe out Islam. Hmm. Fixing to wipe out Islam. And that's why you see the mightiest nations in the world. Mm -hmm. If you looked at ISIS, where'd they come from? They don't manufacture matches, man. How are they tying up the mighty white countries in the world, in Muslim countries? Fear. Fear. And they'll blow up the Vatican. They'll blow up some big school and kill children. They'll blow up anything and when these white folks who got other people thinking they mad, including black folks, they will bum them all. And then they apologize six months from now. General Pateas trained ISIS. Okay, trained them. Mm. Every time you overrun their lines, they have American equipment. They don't make tanks. But a white, filthy, racist, insane nation violates, they might not violate the Catholic Church, the Baptist Church, the Muslim Church, but they violate the universal order. And the universal order will violate you back. So that's where we are. And that's what this is about. And as I've said before, I'll be shocked if they have an election this year. Mm. We'll be in the martial law. Mm -hmm. huh? Yes, sir. Obama will stay president. Huh? Mm -hmm. Huh? Well, I want to ask you one more thing uh -huh. uh, about Dr. Sibby, the recent, his recent passing. Your thoughts about that? Because people want me to ask you about that. It happened yesterday, August 6th, and it's conflicting information about what really happened. Some people say he died in Mexico. Some people say he died in Honduras. Yeah, well, I have no idea. I just know the questions that need to be asked is how did he go into the Supreme Court, Barefoot, and win that case he had out of California? Well, it's a possibility he could have, but I'm not buying it. How did he win that case? He went in, not a lawyer, he went in and won it. So I suspect that he was killed. Why? I have no idea why you'd be killed. Mm -hmm. Usually when you get conflicting news that go around the world, that's white folk. What black person got, got the power to put conflicting news out? Hmm? Mm -hmm. Why? So if you did the research and find out how many people went there to be cured and end up dying. Mm. Huh? That's right. You might not get nothing and then you get and you might. If you get something, then you know. Hmm? Mm. You know. When did NBC run it? When CBS run it? Huh? You didn't get it from them. That's right. So when they understand the network that we have, hmm? mm -hmm. somebody called me, I was traveling. He said, you know, uh, uh, Dr. Sabi died. I said, oh, I didn't know. When? And I heard the same conflict. Some say he had a large amount of money, and some didn't talk about the money. And so then again, we go back to <clears throat> Prince. Mm -hmm. The day, 24 hours after Prince was dead, they said it was drugs, they said it was HIV. Now, go back. 24 hours before he died, they showed us the concert. All the network that he did in Atlanta. One man show, he did two of them that night. Go back and look at it. Yes, sir. And I think if you're gonna run this, you should get a snippet of that. Mm -hmm. And look how strong he was. Two shows. He don't look like somebody that's gonna die. 
in 24 hours? Then the next thing we know, he dead on 24 hours, mm -hmm. April the 20th. You know what April the 20th is? Hitler's birthday. That's right. Hmm? Hitler's birthday. How'd they, how'd they celebrate his birthday? Purple. Purple. Hitler's birthday. Purple. Mm. Huh? Now, we look around, and he's on, he's on a private plane, flying from Atlanta to where? Minnesota. It stopped, carried him to a hospital 40 miles outside of Chicago. When you're in an airplane 40 miles and 400 miles is the same. Mm. Huh? So why didn't they take him to Chicago where they got all them good hospitals? Huh? Why did they take him to some little hospital anybody ever heard of? Now watch this. When somebody with his famous, his power, went to a little hospital, how come the press didn't come in from all over the world and go interview? You haven't seen nobody interviewed from that hospital. Mm -hmm. How come? The news people covered it, one of the big stories going. How come nobody was questioned at the hospital? Then you look back and say, well, wait a minute. Uh, who owns the charter plane? Huh? Who owns that plane? Warren Buffett. Who ain't nothing but a thug and a whore? Huh? Mm -hmm. Now, let's go back to September the 11th. Huh? Mm -hmm. The World Train Building. They said, well, how could they do that without knowing how to fly a plane? He said, well, he went to simulating school in Florida. Hmm? Mm -hmm. Well, who owned the simulating school? Warren Buffett. Huh? Mm -hmm. Now, if you was playing baseball and you pitching to me, mm -hmm. you know how small that home plate looks? Mm -hmm. So how are you going to hit it on the first strike? Every one of them planes was hit on the first strike. Huh? Mm. That's impossible. And then you start seeing it. You start seeing the federal government all over the world. Huh? One lie after another, after another, after another. Huh? Mm -hmm. Then they tell us Malaysian airline disappeared. A Greyhound bus can't disappear. Mm -hmm. Malaysian Airline is in Diego Garcia, an island owned by the British, rented by the United States where they do their dirty work. Mm -hmm. That's what this is about. I know this and NBC don't know it. I know it and the CIA don't know it. Mm -hmm. Something ain't right. Well, it is right. It's a game. And finally, let me say this to black folks that talk about Look what the Jews is able. Wait, ho, 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 ho. A lot of black folk can grab the Jews because you know if you mess with somebody else, they'll kill you. Mm -hmm. Hmm? Just like we mess with our children. Huh? Them white boys down on the job, they call you everything, they ain't gonna mess with them. Come home, and mess with my wife and my children. Now, think about this for a minute. Mm -hmm. The Jews was cut loose from slavery 9,000 years ago by the Egyptians. That's right. In the Christian Bible, it says the universal God. Not the Baptist church, the Muslim church said, I'm coming tonight. If you put the blood on the door, I'll bypass you. You know about this story? Yes, sir. We're talking about the same God that made the stars, the moon, the sun, the oceans, every mosquito. And that God don't know I'm in there unless I put some blood out there. Y'all crazy. Huh? Y'all crazy. It's a game, man. And so here in America, we've been cut loose from slavery 350 years. Go back and find the Jews that was cut loose 9,000 years ago and count their first 350. They act the same as we did. So now you expect me to act 
the way Jewish people act, they've been cut loose from slavery 9,000 years, and I've just been cut loose, huh? Cut loose for less than 400. And everybody's talking about police brutality. Let me tell you, Trump don't scare me. I know he's a fool and he's crazy and he's a thug and he's a hoodlum. He don't scare me. What scares me is black folks have asked me about Trump and have never asked me about these black folks being killed by white cops. That's scary, man. That's scary. Hmm? So when you look at Trump, this is a game, a game, a game, huh? And so, hold that for one minute. Here's the way that Trump and Bernie Sanders was able to do the crap they said they're able to do. I ran for president of the United States as a write-in in 1968. That night, Hillary, Bernie, Trump, New York Times, Washington Post, and all you thugs, check out one of the main papers, same garbage, in the history of the planet, the Wall Street Journal. So this is not Dick Gregory telling you this. Check out Wall Street Journal. Hmm? ran this story four days after the election of 1963. And it said to the world on November the 4th, I'm sorry, 1968. November the 4th, not 63. November the 4th, 1968. All the polling places that took up data had to be shut down because it showed Dick Gregory had been elected president of the United States. And they did this because in the state of Pennsylvania, the computers gave me 9 million votes out of Pennsylvania. And it showed a trend. Now, let me tell you all. Truth ain't never had to be validated by your ignorance. But let me say this. The story ran three days later. Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. The Wall Street Journal, Friday, November the 7th, 1968. The story ran. There was a mistake made. Computers goof showed Dick Gregory with nine million votes out of the state of Pennsylvania, so they had to shoot all the com shut all the computers down. Cause the presumptive president of the United States, it wasn't the prime man, showed. That's what they're doing now. And that's what you deserve. To own slaves. To do the stuff you do now. Dropping bombs on little children and stuff. And so that's how you can see Bernie Sanders. Hmm? Nobody talks about Ben and Jerry. Hmm. With millions is funneled through there for him. Nothing but a thug and a punk. Hmm? That's how that thug can do everything backwards. And let me tell you white folks and black folks something. If these white cops 
was killing white folks' dogs like they're killing my children. White women would have burnt police stations down all over the America, huh? So don't tell me what you think about me, huh? I look at your reaction and know what you think about me. Again, I'm gonna say this to you. All you looked at is a trick. NBC, CBS, ABC, those aren't the reporters that own it. It's the hooligans and thugs, the white supremacy, that controls the whole world. That day is over. So let me say two things to you. The Wall Street Journal. Not Jet Magazine. Your paper. The Wall Street Journal. November the 7th, 1968. Ran that story. No other paper or news media ran that story, okay? Then you see where you're going. And then finally, let me just tell you this here about police brutality mm -hmm. and the reason you can't solve it. I was born October the 12th, 1932. And two things made me famous. Two things made me famous. Hmm? My birthday, October 30th. School was closed for Columbus Day. I thought it was closed for me. That's where I messed up my mind. So I always grew up knowing I was somebody. Hmm? I didn't know God made me somebody. Every year, man, you know, it feel like a little black boy. The only reason I wasn't on welfare because welfare wasn't invented. I thought it was me. The other thing. October 12, 1932. The universal law, I told you, this is how white folks mess up. White folks. I didn't call them white folks. White folks. So as a child growing up, I saw light-complected black folks whiter than white folks. Huh? So if you call yourself white folks, I grew up with white folks whiter than you. White boy, white girl. Huh? That cop you seen in my neighborhood never saw a black person as a child. Live in a white neighborhood, went to a white school. So he grown man. Most of them ain't been to college. Do you know how ignorant you got to be to be a white cop with all the opportunities in a white racist system for a white male? And you end up being a cop. Huh? A cop. Something wrong with that. Huh? A white woman being a waitress? Queen Elizabeth the Queen? And you reduce yours down to be a waitress? Hmm? And you don't see something wrong with it? So let's follow the white boy. When I was a kid, I didn't know nothing about white folks and black folks, except I knew I had kin folks whiter than white folks. When I was a little child, all I wanted me was a fire truck. When the fire truck, I'd go out and wave. I never did that to a police car. Mm -hmm. And never wanted a police car. I didn't know about racism. That's universal law. I hear Cyrene, I prayed for him. Now my prayer is different. I pray for the cop and the firefighter, but now I pray to wherever the cop is going that whoever they're going to meet, both of them will be safe. That's a hell of a way to mess up a prayer. Hmm? Hell of a way. Now, watch this here. So now the white boy ends up being on the police department. Hmm? Mm -hmm. Not a good white job that he qualifies for. With a gun. So when he comes in contact with me, I come in contact with white folk, because I didn't know the difference between a light-complected black and white. We didn't have TV. 
So his cracker, when he's encountered with me, he got a gun and he's ignorant. Hmm? Mm -hmm. Now you got some cops want to be cops, right? Because their father was cops, their daddy was cops, their granddaddy, huh? I'm talking about, now how you going to change that in a white racist system that is inside of him? Well, here's the way you change it. Hmm? Listen up, white cop, I'm going to show you what God intelligence is about. If you change it this way, everybody that carries a gun in America legally have to have a license. Hey, I ought to have a license to drive a car. Hmm? I ought to have a license to sell bread. Huh? Every cop, FBI, CIA, every cop, or any person from the guy about to drive the bank truck with a gun, or the, the, the guard, had to be licensed. That ain't asking too much. Well, wait a minute. How you gonna get that through? I tell you how you get it through. Mm -hmm. You call for a boycott of Christmas. How you gonna get it through? Well, here's how you get it through. 78% of all retail in America sells between Thanksgiving and Christmas. There's decent white folk that still don't know they're racist. You got black folk and white folk go to a doctor and say to their doctor, if you find cancer, don't tell me. That's what white folks say. They're in a state of denial. Men don't know it. But there's some decent, let me tell you, probably the number one human being that's ever been produced in America. Hmm? Ever. It's John Brown. Abolitionists. Hmm. Black folks couldn't belong to the abolitionists. They said we are too childlike. No black person could ever join. You got a bunch of white folks that will kill white folks, die for me, but I couldn't belong to them. That's not what I'm bringing out. John Brown, number one. John Brown. Mm -hmm. Why? When he went to Harper's Ferry, he took his two sons with him. Nobody will fight harder for blackness than me. Money-wise, they take a thing for me, giving money for my children to go to private schools, or money to the movement, I pick the private, I pick the movement. He went there and watched his two boys be shot dead. A white man. For me. He was wounded, but he wasn't shot dead. So his trial came up. They sentenced him to be hanged. I go on my birthday, October the 12th, to say thanks to this brother. Hmm. I go back on February, October the 12th, my birthday. I go back October the 16th is the day of Harper's Ferry. I go back on December the 2nd, the day they hanged him. And I go to the courthouse where they brought him out. I walked down to the streets where he turned left and walked three blocks and then turned right and walked six blocks and there's the tree where they hanged him. I hugged the tree. Jesus was sent here to die for my sins. He wasn't. He had no orders. Had it not been for John Brown it wouldn't have been a civil war. The world wouldn't have changed. Let me tell you what we dealing with so vicious. A white woman didn't get the right to vote to 1921. Legally, black slave men had the right to vote with the 13th, 14th, 15th Amendment. They didn't give it to them, we had the right. 
We talking about his mama, his girlfriend, his sister, his daughter, his wife. That's how vicious this thug is. And she don't even see it. Which means a white woman had to go on trial for murder that she was framed. She couldn't get a jewelry of her peers because you had to vote. So now let's watch this. Abraham Lincoln. When you look at the top of the Capitol, that Indian, mm -hmm. he declared that something special on December the 2nd, the same day of the year that they hanged John Brown. Hang John Brown. Hmm? So I go there. And here's what John Brown said when they yelled at him. Hey, nigga lover, what you got to say? He said, all I can say is what I'm fixing to die for. If I was doing this for the benefit of rich white men, I'd be your hero. Then he walked up the steps. And listen to this real good. When they put the noose around him, he stopped. He said, oh, by the way, I talked to God last night. And God told me to tell you, you have missed the last chance to free the Negro slave with no blood. No blood. He told me to tell you the Negro slave will be free be the biggest bloodbath in the history of planet Earth. That kind of boggled me. The biggest? I was a grown man before I figured it out. It's the only war in the history of the planet where both sides went to the same school, West Point. They knew each other's training. They knew each other's training. You couldn't trick me out of a train like this here. I know when you throw your hand back and throw your head, you're going to throw me a ball, I'm going to walk. So I'll be ready to hit it. Now, the bloodbath came. I want you to watch this. Robert E. Lee, he was a mad Christian. That no, shrewder, shrewder military genius at the time than him. But he thought God sent him here to protect the white Christians. And so if he had a captain that wouldn't go forward front, he'd kill him. Robert E. Lee. So all at once now, the, tip, the Civil War was tipped off because of John Brown. I hear this good. When the Northern soldiers was marching into battle, they weren't singing, God bless America. They weren't singing America the Beautiful. They were singing John Brown's body is a molding in the grave. John Brown's body is a molded in the grave. Glory, glory, hallelujah. His truth is, there's a soldier singing this at the front line. When they hang John, the white folks said, the races. Don't let his body get back to upstate New York. He'll be made a martyr. Black men from Harper's Ferry to upstate New York came down and lined the road from Harper's Ferry to upstate New York and said, try it. Try it. That's why his body got back. John Brown. That's why we hear John Brown. John Brown.
And when Abraham Lincoln decided, oh my God, we got to stop this war. He sent a messenger to meet with Robert E. Lee, horseback. Thank you, God. And by the time he got there, Rob D. Lee had already surrendered. Tell me about universal law. Hmm. Tell me about universal law. Hmm? Now y'all play your games if you want to, but you better play them fast and you better play them quick because the recess is just about over. And you good folks in America that think you good, you're going to be just like the Germans. And you black folks who think you know what America is, that's like a Jew thinking they know what Hitler. Hitler didn't share none of his stuff with the Jews. He had good Jews that was working for him. All of them died. All of them died. And so again, I'm saying, until you understand universal law, you can walk around with your bullshit symbols and all of that stuff. Hmm? with all them symbols, with all the Masons and the Catholics and this and that, you haven't stopped anything. You haven't stopped nothing. And that universal order that put us here. I got here the same way Queen Elizabeth got here. Queen Elizabeth made $360 million every 24 hours just interest on her money. Hmm? But if she and my welfare cousin balled up their fists and put them right next to each other, the same universal God made both fists. There's no such thing as a queen's fist and a welfare mother's fist. Hmm. No such thing. Hmm? Same thing. God made women and men made queens. God made men and men made kings. The difference between a woman and a queen and a man and a king is the way you wrap the gift. Hmm. So I get this woman now, 50 gifts today from Target. And on the way back, I stopped at Sack Fifth Avenue and said, would you change these labels? I go to Neiman Market and said, would you gift wrap this for me? Hmm. She look at the gift and don't know where it came from. Same thing. And so, that's where we are now. Queen Elizabeth cannot go into London because London is not part of Britain. Right. No more than Rome is part. The Vatican is not part of Rome. It's a different city. In order for Queen Elizabeth to go to London, she got to get permission from the Lord Mayor. And if they give it to her, she got to come back and go through the back gate, temple gate, where they do the devil ritual. Mm -hmm. And she got to come dressed as a servant. I think it's three o'clock. I know it's past a little bit. Oh, yeah, no, I, I'll do it hourly. You sure? Yeah. All right. Dressed as a servant. Mm -hmm. Huh? She ain't nothing, nothing. Unless you get a little punk ass thug dog entertainer, Cedric the Entertainer out of St. Louis, Missouri, and I really shouldn't think much out of that Negro thug, said Martin Luther King in, in barbershop and you black folks that went to see it and still go to it, huh? Huh, said King wasn't nothing but a whore in the movie and said Rosa Parks didn't do nothing. She's just too tired to move her big fat black ass. Her ass is not black. And that's why you know a white boy wrote that and that punk said it. And now he can masquerade among black folk cause we fools and among white folk. But as he said, as he called Mother Teresa a whore, And called Queen Elizabeth. She didn't do nothing. Punk, 
he be dead now. Dead. And he said that. Mm. So thank God there is a universal law. Have fun, said it. Because had King not died for you and me, you wouldn't be here making money. Hmm. You'd be the same type of nigga you was before King changed things. You will pay. Not by me. By a universal God that don't have no eraser. Hmm. So have fun. Do your little commercial about your dad. Hmm. And have fun. And wherever bad people go, I'll be there with you. Hmm. Because every time I get on a plane and pay taxes to America, and they spend money to buy bombs out of my money, I ain't no better than you, punk, thug, dog. So be ready when you go to your parties. And everybody says, Cedric, Cedric, see if you can hear the real God coming through. And say what I'm saying to you, you ain't nothing but a punk, pimp, thug, hoe. Okay? Now you write off what I say. But wherever you go, I'll be there with you. Hmm. I look in the mirror and I see who I am. You look in the mirror and you see who white folks tell you you are. So thank you. God bless you and my brother Ron. What a blessing. More information than got around the world. You should make NBC, CBS, and ABC sick. Hmm. That you do things they can't do. And maybe if they studied you, they would find out there is a difference between a black person and a white person. Harvard didn't teach you how to send this around the world. You don't have no budget, man. Huh? Huh? So when I look at Joe Madison that takes it up to here, hmm? and have made a lot of changes. I look at Carl Nason that takes it up to here, Hmm? I look at Kathy Hughes, hmm? a black woman, put an empire together. Hmm? Now look at my man in Baltimore, you know. Jerry Muhammad, Brother Muhammad. Brother Muhammad. Yeah. Huh? <laughs> that moves it to another level. And there's probably some out here I don't know. But I just say thank you, thank you, thank you. And listen, man, listen to what you're doing and know what you're doing and rest your brain, man, huh? Rest your brain, because that's where it's coming from. It ain't coming from your feet. You ain't no tap dancer. Hmm? Sir. It ain't coming from your hands. You ain't no boxer. Hmm? Sometime when the universe picked you, take somebody else to tell you you was picked. Because this white racist just not tell you you ain't nothing. I'm telling you. You, Joe Madison, Muhammad, Cole Nelson, Kathy Hughes have made me who I am, not comedy. The world know me. Nah. And they trust me. I thank you. I thank you.